apologies uh, for being late. I am here. Uh, I just need to um, sort out a few things on my screen and then we can get going. Hang on a sec. Um, there might also be a slight drilling back sound in the background. I hope that's not too distracting. So uh, just bear with me. It's always Todd's law, isn't it? When you're late to start something, that's exactly when uh, Microsoft wants to do a whole batch of upgrades so everything starts a little bit slower uh, so let's just get going on this if you're watching the recorded version it was held live on Wednesday the 4th of April at 12 30 in the afternoon so the way this breaks down what we do we take a look at the market so we'll take a look at the major markets uh, what's been happening a lot's happened China has responded to this tariffs uh, thing from the US that was happening what about 10 days ago by imposing its own tariffs on more than 100 US products in, in you know I think in involving major stuff like cars and soybeans so we've seen uh, a really big sell-off in US markets overnight no I'm not at the dentist that's an actual drill drill in the background um, so we've seen a big sell-off in US markets overnight so we'll, we'll take a look at those because it's, it's really interesting where we are I think for US markets at the moment um, because we've come back near those old lows but also as part of today <laughs> that's a lot of noise in the background also as part a part of the session what we'll look at is um, different trading strategies and today we're, we're, we're gonna look at oh hang on that is all right hold on a second excuse me that, that is too loud I've just got to do something uh, could you, would you mind waiting for half an hour so, okay, I think I'm gonna record this thing now. if it's a bit quieter it'll be all right but that's too loud <laughs> right <laughs> all right let's get back into it um so there's our risk warning so we're going to look at how to play stop losses so where do stop losses go um, why do most people make mistakes when they're doing stop losses uh, all of that sort of thing so um, let's get cracking <laughs> this is like carry on carry on the markets isn't it let's have a look at um, so we're going to use Aondo's trading platform which is trade hub here we go let's put that full screen and let's get into it oh, hang on a second Right, let's um let's open up a chart. I think let's start off by looking at US markets. So let's go with the S and P 500. Let's open that chart and have a look at this in a bit more detail. So we've seen. Oh, why does it always want to do this? It sometimes never wants to go full full screen, does it? There we go. Okay. So let's just have a look at, at where we are. Okay. So this is the, the big picture view for the S and P 500. So the the broader US stock market index of course we'd had months and months of a relatively low volatility market we've just seen the market grinding its way higher then we had that a big explosion of volatility and the January markets fell off a cliff and we came back down to here we came back to 25 28 ish tested a couple of times over three days and that was a sign that we we were seeing the buyers come back in and we saw a massive rally a much bigger rally than I was expecting because I thought after this sell-off so many people will be spooked that we'll just have chop in markets and, and that is so far what we're having um, but we're, we're back down here again so because of these trade tariffs overnight there's all this news from China overnight I'll just show you the size that that's the fall you know so we were trading yesterday at the close about what 26 15 ish and it plunged as low as 25 60 that's a big move that's probably a 400 500 point down move as well it's a 50 point move in the S&P so it's really interesting now you know this week already this week on on Friday we got the payrolls so we got non-farm payrolls coming out this Friday at 1 30 it's normally uh, yeah it is the biggest announcement usually in any month US unemployment numbers so we're normally guaranteed some volatility but because of this 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 Chinese ch trade tariff news overnight I think it's gonna be a really interesting session because because really if if you know we are gonna see some sort of recovery from markets we need to see it now and, and two days ago we saw it you know we saw the S&P push down to uh, there we go to the lows of what how low did it get 2550 those previous lows were 25 30 ish 
and we saw a bounce yesterday but but overnight you know we've given up that bounce so really going into today the big test is going to be well how does it perform down here you know do we see do we see this level this level hold so you could argue looking at the charts you could argue right the weakness overnight has just given us a second bite of the cherry in terms of buying for a recovery but the big level is really 2530 i see if i think if we end up seeing 2530 lost you know it could be a case of um tin hats again look out below you know because we had this this massive sell off in feb um people have been reassured by the fat markets bounce back uh if we see it broken again i think we could see you know similar levels of panic so um let's see what happens but at the moment for me uh i'd be i'd be tempted to be a buyer down here you know with, with stops below let's just put put an rsi on hold on a sec let's put a, let's make this a 10 day rs oh 10 day rsi oh, let's do that again so and let's see because I, I guess we would have a little bit of divergence on this now let's have a look 10 days so i like a 10 day rsi because it's two weeks no yeah it's two weeks two trading weeks actually not quite yet oh actually no we have we have the markets hit a low here pushed to a low on monday and the rsi uh was making a higher low okay so uh, that that's divergence that's normally a suggestion like back here where the market hits a low and pushes lower still it's normally a suggestion that that maybe the weakness has been overdone okay so that's that's the test now i think so i think we're in for a really interesting session this afternoon and, it, and to, to sort of get ahead of myself a bit when talking about stop losses um most i think most people it's maybe a bit of a generalization but i think most people in the beginning anyway play stop losses in the wrong place you know they'll they'll, they'll trade let's say the dow they'll trade the dow they'll buy the dow and they'll, they'll do two pound a point they only want to lose 100 quid so they'll put a stop loss 50 points away uh 50 it's completely meaningless you know the, the dow doesn't care and doesn't know you only want to lose 100 quid you know 50 points is nothing particularly at the moment given the volatility so i think we have to think about and we'll look at this in a bit more detail in a sec, you know, where do stop losses go? And the obvious place now on the S&P, if we're trading the S&P, is stop losses uh, the other side of those lows. So, so 2530, you know, that, that's, that, that is the big level uh, on the S&P. So uh, let's see what happens. A more aggressive stop, let's, um, let's flip this over so we can see the week so far. Let's make it a 30 minute chart maybe, here we go. More aggressive stop for me, if you, want to, if you really wanted to buy now, if you thought, well, actually, this overnight weakness is overdone. If, if you think, I mean, it's a, it sounds like a big deal to me, these Chinese tariffs, but let's say we, we took the view, the overnight weakness is overdone, more aggressive stop is a stop below Monday's low. So Monday's low is 25.50-ish. So we could be a buyer now, uh, where is it now? 25.76 with a stop loss, maybe at 25.45. So we've got 30 big points of risk on the S&P but potentially, if we if we claw our way back, we've got what 90 points upside. So that that is a three to one trade down here. So I think it's, I think it's really interesting uh, what what this afternoon session is going to look like. Okay, so for me, we'll, we'll look at this for all the markets we look at today. When it comes to placing stop losses, what you want to do is place them past obvious big levels. Yeah. So if we're looking on the dailies, that's the obvious big level, the lows from Feb. If you're looking a bit more shorter term or a lot more shorter term, the obvious big level for the S&P is the low for this week. And I, and I do think too many people have a, a finger in the air attitude uh, to placing stop losses and, and get frustrated when they get stopped out. And they think, oh, the evil market or the broker is stopping them out. And it's not. It's just because they're placing stop losses in the noise. Let's say you bought the S&P yesterday, four o'clock yesterday here at 2600. And you thought I'm going to place a stop at 2590 because I only want to risk losing 10 points. It's completely irrelevant. That is an irrelevant level. You know, if you if you were buying here, the obvious place to have stop loss for me would be the low of the day so far. You know, that would be the closest below that level there, and it wouldn't have been touched. So think about the big levels. So I think it's really interesting going into this afternoon. Is this an overreaction to the to the trade tariffs? If you thought it was, there's an obvious trade, which is a buyer with stop losses either under that low or a more aggressive is a stop loss under the overnight low. But I think we're in for an interesting open when the markets start trading today. Let's take a quick look at the uh, the Dow to see how that's reacted. So similar sort of pattern, obviously, for the Dow. It's 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 a not as broad a stock market index as the S&P. 
um, but you know, similar sort of thing as well. So the level on the Dow, the, the immediate level to watch going into today is 23,330. That's the lowest from earlier this week on Monday. Uh, let's see what happens. And the big picture, I think the Dow, is it sort of had a little look below? No, same, same thing for the Dow. The really big levels for the Dow are 23,100. So the lows from, let's, let's call it 23,000, the lows from the beginning of Feb. You know, if these markets are not going to suffer a bigger move lower from here, they need to start rallying now. That's, that's what I think, you know, because we, we had such a, such a big sell-off and the buyer stepped in. So we have seen some confidence come back. I think if we take out these February lows, that confidence goes away again and we could be left with a much more interesting and volatile market. Let's take a look at, now as we're on indices, let's take a look at uh, some of the others. I think like I've said for a while now, I don't I hardly look at the FTSE anymore because so much is clearly being driven by what's going on in uh, US markets. You know, so, so whatever's happening in the US is clearly what's dictating what's happening with the rest of the world. We did see the FTSE last week did slip below those old lows. Uh, but US markets didn't. So we had a bit of a maybe a freakish move where it, sl where it slipped below uh, March 22nd. We've seen a bounce back since then. So, you know, it's the same sort of thing for the FTSE, the lows down here and the lows there. We'd expect this to hold the market up if the market's uh, going to rally from here. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Let's take a look at the DAX. But like I say, it's the US markets, the ones to watch. Similar for the DAX. The DAX hasn't breached those lows. So the DAX is doing what the US is doing and is holding above the sort of the massive sell-off lows. And on the DAX, it's about 11.685, and we're currently trading at 11.840. So um, it's very interesting where stock markets here are now, and then they need to bounce, basically, because I think if they slip below, we could see more selling, but the US markets are the ones to watch. Okay, it's nice and quiet now, isn't it? Let's, um, let's, let's have a look at some of the other markets as well. Let's have a look some of the foreign exchange markets. So let's, let's take a look at pound US dollar. I think this is interesting this week because, because it's really struggling, the pound uh, this week, which which again, oh, I mean, you know, my, I think my view for, for a while now has been one of continued recovery. Let's just flip this over to a weekly on the pound. So we do have, uh, where's, my, where's my lines gone? Sorry, I'm just going a bit crazy. Yeah, here we go. So we do have this, um, this this trend there we go that looks like that uh, so that that's happily chugging chugging away that trend arguably been been going for, for just over a year now since the January lows last year um, so for longer term any weakness in the pounds looks like a buying opportunity and if you were trading off this weekly chart so if you were looking to position yourself you know for weeks and maybe months in the pound again going back to the stop loss thing the closest i would want my stop loss is below that that low there the low from it's the actually it's the low for the year isn't it is the low for the year no not quite it's the low from 25th of feb so that that's at 137 if we round it down so 137 is the big level for pound US dollar. We're in this trend. It's been a bit of a dull uh, couple of months, but the trend is still holding, you know, so, so the expectation at the moment would be, I think for a push up to maybe 148, so that the, the pre-EU referendum highs. So I think that, that looks like a not too ridiculous uh, medium term target for pound US dollar uh, from here. So let's see. let's see, let's see what happens, but let's flip it onto the dailies just to see a bit more. And the hourlies are interesting. So let's look at the daily. So there's our, there's our daily chart. We've had, it's been pretty directionless. You know, we've had it uh, over the last month, you know, it's traded as low as that 137 level. It's traded as high as 142. So reasonable volatility, 500 point swing. But you know, the, the big level, the old highs up here, 143.50 and 137, you know, and it's just a bit, it's a bit directionless, you know. So at the moment, if I was just, I probably wouldn't do a trade here based off the dailies because it's almost slap bang in the middle of the range, you know. So, so the ideal setup would be a bit of a pull down to maybe 138, a bit of strength coming in, stops under 137, looking for the market to, to turn its way back up. Let's see, let's see what happens. But I did do a, a trade on it this week. I got, I got stopped out of break even, but. Um, I think it's, it's been interesting this week, but well, sort of fairly interesting because there have been opportunities, but you've had to be really quick and I'm a little bit slow 
you know, we had had the market March the 29th traded as low as 140.10, rallied up uh, up to here, 140.80. Then came back yesterday. Was that the trade I did? Yeah, it probably was. Yes, yes, no, day before yesterday, came back to 140.26. So came within what 20 points or so of the previous day's low. So again, if you're if you're short term trading it and looking for stops, you know the obvious place to to put stops on a really short term trade. Let's just zoom in. Is underneath the previous day's low if you're a buyer, you know, because by definition that's where it stopped going down yesterday and turned around. We're assuming a similar thing is going to happen. So I ended up buying it at 140.35, I think, on the way back up. Uh, and the market ran up a bit to 140.80. I moved my stop to 140.35 and was looking to trail it up, but the market fell off, got stopped out. But again, there was a, there's another opportunity again yesterday. You know, we can see how this 140. 140 level in the very short term is holding it up. It did push higher yesterday. So it is this week, it is almost trying to start a trend. We do have higher highs, not quite higher lows, but but going into even the early hours of this morning, it's made a higher high. So it is trying to push higher. It just keep gets keep knocking getting knocked back. So there's there's arguably a trade here. You know, so arguably the trade here where a buyer at 140.37, where it's trading now. With a stop loss, the closest I would want my stop loss is under the low for the week, which is only 140.10. So that's only 27 points away from where we're currently trading. So let's say we go 139.90 on a stop. So down here. So if it breaks, we'll be out of it. Um, so, but it, it does look a bit weak, doesn't it? It just can't seem to hang on to this momentum. Okay, so that, I think that's interesting. 140 is the level to watch pound yes dollar. If that breaks, then maybe we're back here. We're looking at 139.80. And if that goes, maybe we're looking at a pullback into the mid-March range at 139-ish. Uh, so I think it's really interesting to watch this 140 level pound US dollar at the moment. Uh, and so maybe we'll have a quiet couple of days because we got the payrolls uh, coming out on Friday. So maybe it'll be a little bit quiet, but um, let's see what happens. But 140 is the big level to watch. I have to say, looking at the chart in isolation, it does look like it's corrections over, you know, so I, st I still would be expecting a squeeze higher, but I'd be bailing out if 140 broke. So that, that's pound US dollar. But the big picture is still very much the same. It's still very much, okay, the, the, the trend for the last year is up. That hasn't changed, you know, even though it's been a bit of a dull uh, couple of months. Euro dollar is, is a bit the same, I think, where if you look at it, it's just, it's just consolidating, you know, since, what since the beginning of Feb now, but again, the trend for Euro US dollar is still just about up, I think, from last year. Yeah, there we go. There we go. It's right on the trend line. So that's our Euro dollar trend sitting right on the trend line now. So again, if you were looking to buy into that, that bigger trend over the last 12 months, um, it'd be a buy now. If it, assuming it closes positive today, it'd be a buy now. And the logical place to have our stop loss is uh, below that low from from March, 1st of March, 121.50. So that's that's the logical place to keep an eye on. I think it's looking at this as a as a charting purist, then I would say the market's going to go up from here. Euro dollar is going to go up from here. The only thing, and someone's just fired the question in about a stronger dollar. The only thing that makes me a little bit maybe cagey is the fact that coming into this year, everyone, well not everyone, but lots of people were still really negative on the US dollar. So when everyone is negative on the US dollar, or when everyone thinks that a market is pretty guaranteed to move one way, that's exactly the time it will move the other way. So I, I do think we could have a surprise from the US dollar this year, which would mean that these trend lines would break, you know, but at the moment the lines are holding, that's really sitting on the fence, isn't it? The lines are holding. So, you know, going with the chart, you'd have to be a buyer. But I think if we do see on the euro 121.50 lost, it could be the start of a much bigger euro sell off and, of course, much more US dollar strength. So I think it's going to be it's an interesting couple of months, even though the last couple of months has been pretty dead. Uh, but that trend on euro dollar still up 121.50, the really big level to watch on this one. Let's see what happens. And um, we'll look at we'll look at dollar yen in a minute because I think there's an interesting one there. But let's just look at euro sterling because we've been looking at this dipping in and out of this over the last few months. Nothing's changed on euro sterling. You know, again, arguably you want to be a buyer of the euro 
down here because we're, we're, we're trapped in this um in this just fairly dull range you know from 90 at the top to uh 87 on the bottom but a little look through 87 a couple of weeks ago sold off yesterday to 87 13 and we're seeing a bullish engulfing candlestick let's zoom in on that so if the, assuming it closes here today 87.50 ish that's a bullish engulfing where we've engulfed the previous day's candle so again that would suggest that bang that the market should rally from here so that, you know, it's, it's arguably a buy down here euro sterling with the stop loss underneath that low which is 86.67 so arguably you know it's time to rotate its way back up to the 89.50s and then see what happens up there but i think i think it's interesting now dolly yen to finish off on our our currencies let's let's have a look at dolly yen because i think i've talked in the past about false breakouts and i do quite like false breakouts because yeah, there's a level like that 120 150 level on euro dollar those lows it's a level that everyone's watching so everyone knows what the level is everyone knows what the lows are and that the classic you know charty approach is well like, like this one up here on dolly yen you know if we see a big level break so the support from whenever that was november last year at 110.84 if it breaks we're expecting a sell-off yeah and it chopped about a bit and it did sell off we saw the start of a much bigger move lower but what i think is interesting in dollar yen at the moment so again i think maybe the contrarian trade here and again it would favor the us dollar uh, you know, sort of these these old lows down here where it's all got it's still weak don't get me wrong but um sort of 105.54 and then we had that broke had a little look below and then it bounced back then it so 105.25 was the new low then it had a little look below and it's bounced back so it, it does appear to be running out of downward momentum so even though that big trend is still down I think that there is an argument for being doing a contrarian trade here where we want to be a buyer because we think okay the weakness has really been overdone we're not seeing the same momentum on the downside so arguably the, con the contrarian trade is to be a buyer with a stop loss under those lows from from end of march 104.63 so i don't think there's any rush to do that but i think it is interesting you know down down at these levels where it had been falling off a cliff for much of this year so real dollar weakness and we've seen it come back a bit in the last the last couple of weeks or so we've seen the market just, just five, minutes, five minutes five minutes we've seen the market um not not really follow through so i think dolly yen's interesting you know dolly yen is an interesting one do these levels hold do we see the start of a recovery so i think that's must maybe the contrarian trade here so to wrap things up let's take a look at, at gold and oil um i think gold has probably rallied the last couple of days oh where we go because again you'd have thought because of the, the flight to quality the whole because of the concerns about this 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 tariff stuff um the volatility in stock markets all of that we've seen seen gold pick up and gold again has been a pretty dull market for most of this year but there's there's some obvious levels you know if you want to be nimble 1300 has really propped up the price of gold all this year so it's been stuck in this sideways boring range uh but so i wouldn't be a buyer at 1340 but if we see it push down like we have done every month this year if we see it push down to sort of 1310 or slightly below 1310 it looks like a buying opportunity with stop losses below 1300 again going back to this idea of stop losses let's place them at, at obvious big levels beyond obvious big levels not just place them in the noise uh, and now it's rallying up so i think i think again if you know we've seen clearly we've seen the spike higher on the tariff stuff overnight and the volatility but look, look what a barrier this has been uh for a long time now for gold uh this whole sort of 1350 to, to 1375 a bit higher up has been a real barrier for gold so for me if i was looking at gold now i'd be getting ready to think about being a seller not yet obviously because it's still strong but let's see what happens the next couple of days when this maybe some of this tariff panic uh fades away possibly do we see it start to run out of steam ahead of the march highs around about 1355 it's still strong now it wouldn't be short now but let's see what happens do we see it maybe fail to push a little bit higher so there's i think it's an interesting one there for, for short term short-term traders now let's take a look at the price of oil. oil's been clobbered uh over 
the last week, which I think again is interesting. If we look on the daily, I'm not quite sure how much data we have because I think it's just rolled over to a new contract. Okay, we can't we can't see it. Let's have a look. Have we got the Brent crude? Do we see more on Brent crude? No, they've all rolled over. But oil, the, you know, the story for oil is up 50% since May last year. The trend for oil is definitely up. Um, 66 and a half, 67 dollars has been the high for oil, but there still appears to be an appetite to be a buyer. At the moment, it's still weak, but we've seen uh, over the last three weeks or so, $60 being being a real floor for oil. So at the moment, I'd be tempted to still be looking uh, for buying opportunities. You know, we've got, we've got big levels coming up at 60. So again, if we were looking to trade oil, there are lots of, from a stop loss point of view, I think there are lots of big levels to pick up on, you know, running from from 60 through to 61 and a half. You know, it's, it's still weak at the moment. That trend is still down. But um, for the last eight months, nine months, we've just seen any weakness in oil as an opportunity to be a buyer. So I think that is an interesting market to watch. So we'll start wrapping things up there. I think I think the really immediate stuff is U.S. stock markets because of this tar tariff thing overnight. So because we've come down to we are now back near enough at these old lows from Feb. It's really bounce or bust time for these markets. So uh, let's see what's happened there. I think that's that's the really immediate thing. The shorter term thing is pound US dollar. How does how does it perform uh, ahead of 140, 140, 10, whatever the level is? I think so. You know, I think we are seeing it so far holding above there again. Let's see how that performs. And then of course on Friday. We've got the payrolls, so we'll see plenty of volatility for markets uh, anyway off the back of that. But we'll close it up there. Um, thanks for coming along. We'll do it all again next Wednesday. Any questions in the meantime, feel free to drop me an email. My email address is david at tradeafter.com. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Jones the Markets for market stuff and charts during the day. Um, but I think we are, we're are we in for an interesting rest of the week, I think, um, considering what's happened overnight. Okay, uh, enjoy the rest of your afternoon, and we'll wrap things up there.